This is Abe Freetanzer from Awards Radar, and I'm so thrilled to be speaking with Phoebe Fox about The Great. How are you, Phoebe? I'm really good. How are you? Good, good. I love this show, and I love talking about it, so I'm very happy that we're uh, going to dive in a little bit today. Amazing. Would you consider yourself a history buff? And if so, are you familiar at all with this era? Um, I wouldn't consider myself a history buff, although I find... It, uh, history interesting um I didn't really know anything about this era but I was I was that um member of the cast who turned up first day you know with my Catherine the Great um biography and um Tony McNamara was like yeah you're you're not going to need that <laughs> um me and Sasha Dewan always joked that we were like we'd done all the homework and we turned up and you know um as you probably know by now, it's very loosely based on the exact history. It still does feel, though, like there's an intention to mirror what things might have been like, even just costume-wise and in art direction. So how, how important is that to making this show? Yeah, it, totally. That's that's absolutely true. And it's it, one of the negotiations that can be quite hard as the actor is finding the line between being true to the period and um, allowing yourself to push at the boundaries of kind of how modern you can make it. I remember I, I, there was a scene where I flipped the finger to Tatiana and they were like, too modern. I was like, okay, there's the line. That's the line. Because <laughs> um, the, the language is so uh, modern that it's, um, yeah, sometimes you, you forget you're actually in the 1700s also like to think they weren't speaking English and probably, you know, not swearing quite as much, but otherwise, yeah. you know, yeah. close enough to the truth. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite uh, Mariel mode for, you know, how she's acting? I like it when she's angry, actually. I think um, I was sort of um, thinking about season three and, uh, you know, in, in preparation for this interview and I, uh, what I enjoyed about it is that it was a return to the kind of core Mariel, which is Mariel when she's really fucking angry. And it's so fun to play that level of ire because um, as a person, I very much suppress that, you know, uh, I'm never outwardly angry. And um, uh, yeah, it's just, it's so liberating to be so, um, yeah, so outwardly um volcanic you know in her emotions in fact I think that uh, what I enjoy about playing her is that all of her emotions are quite extreme um she feels things really intensely um you know she's she's not subtle True. I think one of my favorite moments from season three was when she was heckling Karen, Catherine in a very public forum and just having the chance to really be so I mean she's not someone who ever really filters herself but someone who is com so completely unfiltered in that moment just you know yeah. pointing out every hypocrisy and all of that yeah yeah totally yeah I think um it's I actually I don't think I really know anyone who is so unfiltered like that it's it's quite a rare um thing and it makes for great comedy <laughs> And it was also fun just a few episodes later to see her, you know, with Grigor trying to basically suppress as much, well, not trying very hard, but being forced to suppress through pork and other methods, you know, what she really felt. That was a fun yeah. dynamic to get the experience. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, it's, there are so many great relationships I think that Meryl has in this show. And I think I'd love to start with Maxim because it must be, I, this is one case I think where he is very close to the the actor Henry is actually very close to the age the character is supposed to be. Yes, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, it was very complicated in season two because he was just that bit younger, and it meant that we um, would have to send him out of the room for portions of dialogue, um, which he wasn't allowed to hear. Um, and he was doing that whole character without knowing actually what the story was about. He wasn't allowed to read the scripts, um, which is kind of extraordinary. And then in season three, he was allowed to, to hear a bit more. And um, it still felt like we were totally corrupting him. I mean, some of the things that Tony was getting him to say, <laughs> although I think he really enjoyed it, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was um, it was fun basically being upstaged every day by an 11 year old. Um, that's something that's um, new to me. It used to be terrific. 
Um, I also really uh, enjoyed seeing just with Grigor and how that sort of that was new, you know, evolving over the course of the show that wasn't a relationship from the beginning. What was it like to sort of work tangentially uh, with that with with Gollum and then be a lot closer? Yeah, well, when we got those um, scripts that detailed that we were sort of getting together and not only that, but that we knew each other and had lost our virginities to each other, both Willem and I were like, oh, we actually know each other. Didn't right? Okay, it was sort of and not that I actually interact with him at all. I think in season one, I think we had one scene where he passed me in a corridor, but um, I didn't actually really uh realize that of course the whole court is like we'd grown up together, we're all the same age, um, and we would have all been there since children. So yeah, it 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 shed new light on just the betrayal um that fuels. Mariel's hatred um, throughout the series of these all these people who stood by and let her just become a servant and never sort of stepped in to to help her and give her aid you know um, but yeah it was great to explore this love story with Gwillem because he's also a fantastic actor so getting and I think we we have good chemistry so it's um, it's been really good to explore that I think that Georgina and Mariel would actually get along very well if they yeah. weren't so hell-bent on hating each other. Absolutely. Well, I think, you know, in the sort of pre-season one, they would have been really good friends. I always thought that actually they were probably really tight, which is why, um, um, yeah, why she can't stand her <laughs> anymore. And then, of course, there's Archie, who I think that's one of the most uh, peculiar relationships on the show. That's especially, you know, when he's sort of uh, beating himself and then comes in and asks her to take over. Like, there's there really yeah. are no boundaries that should exist at all there. Yeah, it's a, sort of got a weird sexual tension to it, even though we're cousins, um, which I really like because it's never really explained, actually, why we have this sort of masochistic kind of um sexual teasing going on but we're also related and he's also sort of a father figure um I think it's it's said in the series at one point that he basically raised me um if I remember correctly and yeah I love it because it's it's so weird and um it feels like Tony allows his weirdest side out in that relationship in that dynamic and he doesn't hold back and um yeah, I don't know. With all these things, all the best, the funnest bits to do um, are when you get a script and it's like, she whips Archie and you're like, great, how are we going to do that? <laughs> um, yeah, it's fun. And um, digging him out of the uh, forest floor was fun. For me, I think not so much for um, for him because he had to be buried up to his face in the ground, which, um, yeah, he took like a champ. So assume he doesn't grow that beard himself. Some of that is uh, is not real. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing I also was realizing as I was watching season three is Pugachev feels like such a different character. But of course, it's Nicholas also playing him. What is it like to get to work with him on a very intimate level that you don't really get with Nicholas as Peter? Yeah, right. Exactly. Again, um, you know, Nick is one of those people that I I've barely done any scenes with. And um yeah, we kind of reveled in the fact that we got to to interact with each other in season three. And um, yeah, we had a lot of fun filming the bit with, where we got drunk and um, were kind of, uh, yeah, carousing down a corridor and um, causing havoc. Um, yeah, he's brilliant. I think um, I have so much respect for him, how he's managed to make those two characters um, so uniquely different. It's really not an easy task as an actor to be two different people in one series yeah and this show has so many characters and arcs that was taking us this long to even get back to l who obviously is the main anchor you know catherine yeah. for for mariel what is your working relationship like with with her i mean it's love you know i love her and we have a uh yeah, I mean, we have great chemistry as well, and we really enjoy each other's company off set, um, which I think bleeds into how we, uh, what shines in the relationship on camera, because um, 
Yeah, it, even when things are really bad between um, Catherine and Mario, which is seems like a lot of the time actually, um, it's underpinned by so much respect and affection, and that's true for the two of us as well. And um, yeah, I sort of I'm in awe of her. Really, she's such a an incredible actress, but she's got a real shine to her as a woman, and um, she leads our show with um yeah such strength and clarity and even though she's a decade younger than most of us um yeah and it's I I, I was I was upset when um our relationship took a turn for the worst in season three but um I think we're back on track maybe and um, maybe we'll never be that's the sort of beauty of that relationship is that um it's ever changing and they just betray each other constantly um in a way um yeah it's it's so complicated but i think they will always uh be true to each other because in a way we always joke that the real love story in the show is actually between catherine and mariel rather than catherine and um uh peter <laughs> i like that is there anybody in the ensemble that you didn't really get a chance to work with that you would have loved to have been able to um do you know what? I, I actually always, I don't really interact that much with the kind of mass ensemble. It's weird. Like I don't do very much with um, Doug Hodge, who I think is incredible as Velamentov. He's the one that really makes me laugh. Um, there's quite a lot of his stuff that's entered um, the lexicon in, in my marital home because my husband loves that character as well. Um, we're always imitating Velamentov. Um so yeah, I'm always sad that I don't get to do much with him or um um you know the king queen of Sweden. I don't think I do anything with them really and they're uh, brilliant, I think. Have you received any surprising reactions from fans or people in your own life to Mariel over the course of the show? Um no, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say surprising. I'm 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 not surprised at all that people are drawn to her. I think, you know, it's always um it's always such a pleasure to see a woman who's so unbridled, you know, and um, yeah, so I'm not, I'm, I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for taking a few minutes uh, to speak with me and uh, always great to get to revisit the great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>